In example one, we are looking at the cosecant and the secant functions. The reciprocals of the sine and cosine functions are defined as, here's our cosecant, which is the reciprocal of the sine, and our cosecant graph is this part here. So you've got these U shapes going up and going down. And notice that those U shapes are happening at those maximum or minimum points of your sine function. And the same thing goes for your secant, which is the reciprocal of the cosine. So it also forms those U-shaped graphs right here. Here's kind of half a one. Here's another half a one. One right here and one right here. And what's happening here is these are also occurring at the maximum or the minimum, and this time of the cosine function. So let's take a look at some properties of our cosecant and secant functions below. I have the graphs for you here. This is the cosecant function. Here's your secant function. Again, they look very similar, just like the sine and cosine look very similar. But they start and have asymptotes in different spots. The domain of our cosecant function, if you take a look, is using almost every x value except for where we have these asymptotes. And the reason why we have these asymptotes is because when the sine function is zero and we take that reciprocal, it becomes undefined. And that's going to happen again when the sine function is at zero. So that means our domain can be anything except x cannot equal n times pi, where n is an integer. And our range, so now we're looking at our y values, our range that we're looking at, if you kind of take a look here, at 1, this is where our lowest points are up on the top, and negative 1 is kind of our highest point when we look towards the bottom. If you look, there's nothing happening in between negative 1 and positive 1. So we could say that our range goes from negative infinity to negative 1, and a bracket meaning it's including the negative 1, and it's going from 1, again the bracket indicates we're including the 1, to positive infinity. Then if we take a look for our y-intercept, that's when it's crossing over this y-axis. Well, our y-axis right now is an asymptote, so we do not have any y-intercepts. So this would be none. And if we take a look at our x-axis, our x-intercepts, well remember our graph doesn't go anywhere in between negative 1 and positive 1, so there is no x-intercept either. We do have asymptotes, and we said again that's when sine is going to be zero, and those asymptotes are going to occur when x is equal to n times pi, where n is an integer. If we take a look at our secant function, it has a lot of the same uh, properties that the cosecant does. First of all, if we look at the domain, the domain is similar to the cosecant, where it's going to have these asymptotes that we can't include but they're different than what the cosecant function is. So here we say that the domain x cannot equal pi over 2 plus pi n, where n is an integer. And our range, our y values, are going to be the same as our cosecant function. Again, it's not going to go anywhere in between that negative 1 and positive 1, but it will happen everywhere else. So we say it's going from negative infinity to negative 1, including it, and from 1 to infinity. If we take a look at our y-intercept, we do have a y-intercept for this graph. Right here, we have the point 0, 1. So we would say our y-intercept is the point 0, comma 1. But similar to the cosecant function, there are no x-intercepts as we never go between negative 1 and positive 1. The period for our cosecant and our secant graph is 2 pi, just like our sine and our cosine. So it's going to repeat every 2 pi. And so that's found by calculating it the same way as we calculated our sine and our cosine function which is by taking 2 pi and dividing it by b to get that period. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, you can get to example 2 and start graphing.